Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. Welcome as well to Day 10 of the Past Masters series. The painting we are doing a study after today was by Camille Corot. It's called Memory of Lake Nemi, which is probably a place in Italy, I'm thinking. And uh, this, this study, I'm pretty happy with it. It's kind of almost abstract. He would do some things with his tree shapes that I thought were very unique. And uh, pardon me, I got a bit of allergies. So if I'm sniffling, I don't know if something's pollinating out here. So uh, please forgive me, please bear with me. Anyway, uh, back to Camille. Yeah, this is a very interesting composition. And like I say, it's 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 strongly abstract if you ask me and it's the kind of thing you would do every now and again it's a very strong sort of geometrical shape in that tree uh... recently i think on instagram i saw someone post uh, a uh... a uh, real zoom in of uh... camille Corot's, uh... one of his paintings and of course the zoom in was of his uh... where his, his tree edges were meeting the sky which is the, the great innovation of Camille Corot was getting the air and light into those uh, tree shapes. And uh, that's always a challenge. I've got my own approach to it. And, uh, you know, the thing is with Camille is if you look, he did a lot of little tiny marks, little scratches, little dabs. Pardon me. Again, with the pollen there. Uh, I just woke up uh, and uh, saw it was going to be uh, sneezy. Um, now, today is Saturday. I'm doing this a little earlier than usual. Uh, it's 8.30 in the morning here. And uh, I'll be posting this up probably. I'm getting ready to go in the studio. I just thought, ah, I'll go and record this uh, first before I go in. And then um, get, get, me, get me post and done uh, when I come home for lunch. So... Not sure what I'm going to do in the studio today. Uh, I know I want to do a painting. Um, I might try and get a few more miniatures done. I've been thinking that's. Uh, I have been really naughty, uh, boy, and uh, uh, had just been doing really mostly painting and um, not much in the way of marketing or even working with my uh, printer and prints. However. I do have a plan, and my plan is uh, I've released a print of a, uh, of a, a really a nice New Zealand beach image, and uh, I feel it's it's lonely. It needs uh, some brothers and sisters. Um, so I've been, uh, and there was uh, two uh, paintings I did last week that I, I basically did the first pass on. I'm really really happy with, and I think they're very appealing images and uh, or paintings and. Um, I had done studies, two of them, and uh, but both came out better than the studies, which is so sweet. So it was great, you know. One thing that's a bummer about doing studies is when the study is stronger than the larger one. Mm, that's rough. That's a rough. And you know, it can happen just for so many reasons. Um, you know, when you're working like the size I'm working on this Camille Corot here. <laughs> Pardon me. Sorry about that. It's going to be a sniffly one, guys. Um, when you're working uh, that size, you know, a little flick of the wrist. Eh, you've done some leaves, you know, flick of the wrist. There's a rock, you know. It's a bit harder to sometimes translate that uh, up as you get larger and larger. Um, although, uh, no real problem for me, I have to say, at this 8x12 size. Uh, I've been really happy with those. Um, and I have done a lot of success. I've done a lot of larger paintings that I'm, I'm happy with and I feel are successful. So, but it is a challenge. And, um, you know, what can I say? We all have our challenges. Life is full of challenges and your artistic life should be as well, right? You know, if it's not, then you're basically just treading water. Uh, I do feel like my stuff's been progressing. Uh, I've really been pushing the envelope with color. I don't even know how much further I could push it, frankly. I mean, uh, some of 
my uh, recent stuff's got so much chroma you almost really can't count it as tonalism but um, it's almost verging into f fauvism you know it's it's uh, well the thing with fauvism is they would go into unnatural like they will put bright greens up against bright reds and things and I'm still within the realm of uh, nat nature and uh, but some of the color effects I've been doing have been more radical, more extreme. A lot more purples, a lot more oranges and yellows and things like that. And uh, we can see those colors in nature, but generally only with uh, specific types of uh, sunsets or sunrises. Um, of course, as you know, you're not going to see a purple, purple sky in the middle of the day. You know, it's just not going to happen. But it does happen, and uh, you know you got to follow your bliss too. That's the other thing you got to follow that thread of uh, significance that uh, that moves you. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd just you know, we've done a lot of Camille Carose here, so but I thought it'd be good to just read a little bit about him. We've only got a minute or two left in the video, but just a little refresher for you. Uh, Camille Caro, this is from uh, Britannica.com, the encyclopedia. Uh, Camille Caro, uh, born 1796, died 1875. That is a long life. The guy was like 99 years old. Holy cow. French painter noted primarily for his landscapes who inspired and to some extent anticipated the landscape painting of the Impressionists. His oil sketches, remarkable for their technical freedom and clear color, have come to be as highly regarded as the finished pictures that were based upon them. To be honest, I haven't seen a lot of Camille Corot oil sketches, but sounds good. Uh, he was born to prosperous uh, parents. His mother was uh, Swiss. Uh, she had a milliner's shop, and uh, his father was a draper. And uh, so this uh, gives you a, a good idea. Oh, maybe I got that wrong. Let's see. Why would it? He was born. Oh, 96 to 75. So he he lived to be 78, which is still pretty good. Pretty good run. Pardon me. Uh, when you get to be my age, which is, geez, I still feel young, you know. But uh, 53, you know, gonna be very soon. Um, yeah ages like 70 this or 70 that we're talking you know 17 years in the future I'll be 70 uh, <laughs> it's a little hilarious <laughs> it's not a joke though now is it it was something you could laugh about when you were younger but uh, honestly I still feel like I'm in my uh, my 20s or 30s uh, except for being wiser of course you know um, uh, maybe I'll put that down to uh, not having kids or whatever I don't know, but um, yeah, I still feel like a young person. Yeah. Anyway, uh, good old Camille. That was just a little bit. You know, you can. He's very popular and um, very well regarded. So you can get a lot of information about him uh, on the internet. And I have a playlist of a bunch of my studies after Camille Crow. Some of the more popular things I put on my uh, YouTube channel. So go to my channel and check that out. Also, you can check out my site, landscapepainter.co.nz. There's a lot of good stuff there. And um, I'll be back again real soon. So meanwhile, please take good care and stay out of trouble. <laughs>